and what is up everybody and happy wednesday welcome to episode 31 of lpg podcast and today our special guest is me yours truly there's two of me as you can see <laughs> well yes it's only gonna be me but i got a great show planned for everybody and uh it's kind of my fault because um there was some scheduling issues I kind of uh, didn't communicate correctly, so now we're doing this solo cholo. Sorry about that, gents. Um, To my wonderful co-hosts, I apologize. But let's get this party started. First off, I'm going to say something great about me um, that happened today, right? Because we got to start the show that way. That's the classic. So I'm going to try to keep the same format. So what happened to me today? Well, I got a ton. I mean, I have a gratitude journal. Um, it's, it's called the five minute uh, gratitude journal and you can find it on Amazon. It's like, I don't know, like 15 bucks, but it is great. It's very helpful and it kind of forces me. It gets me into that routine to um, to uh, what's it called? Uh, write in the journal, uh, like just thank, just give thanks and keep gratitude top of mind. And uh, t- every day I have like three or four things that I write in there. And today, uh, today was great. I mean, I get to, well, first off, I get to wake up. I have a healthy family. We're healthy. Everybody's, uh, everybody's good to go. All my friends and family are, you know, they're, they're good to go. So that right there is a blessing in itself. And also my jujitsu training is good. I'm healthy. Um, I feel good about it. And, uh, and yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's those little things that really, really matter. And, and we're blessed to be here in such a wonderful place. All right. With that, uh, let's move on because I want to talk about, um, I got some great topics today. All right. So I got, well, this one I've been wanting to talk about and we were going to talk about it, uh, with everybody here, but since they're not here, I get to talk about it all by myself. So to, uh, I can, I can never say his name, but it's Tua Tagovailoa. He's the uh, quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. So it's of great interest here. Let me pull it up. Look at that. Now I get to do it all. <laughs> um, so he started uh, taking uh, jujitsu classes or started training jujitsu, not because he wanted to become, you know, a, a martial artist, MMA fighter, or anything like that. I mean, he's a he's a quarterback. He plays for the uh, dolphins and he's he's doing good again um so well yeah some some people can can question that but that's not what we're here for thing is that he had a few concussions last i mean he had a major concussion last year last season and he started taking jujitsu um to he started training jujitsu to prevent these concussions and a lot of it here let me pull it up so uh, why does to uh Train jujitsu. Well, let's explain this unique tua jitsu training. Ooh, I like that tua jitsu. That's only for tua. So, what would it be for me? Lua itch. No, it doesn't work. See, it only works with Joe. Joe jitsu. <laughs> so, I can't make it work for me. Uh, all right. Anyways, back to it. Add. Add. Uh, quarterback missed multiple games last year due to concussions. So let's scroll down a little bit. And I'm not going to play the, well, I can play it really quick. Look at that. Boom. I don't think, yeah, that was pretty bad. Anyways, here, let me move forward. Um, so it's the rolling part of the art that has helped the Dolphins quarterback as he has Learn to swiftly maneuver his body as he's falling to the ground and landing safely and not on his head. That's kind of funny because you don't really train to fall, right? You, you just like, um, there's no formal training. And when you fall, you can uh, really hurt yourself. So, so that's one of the things that jujitsu trains you, right? How to fall, how to break the fall. Um, it, it still hurts. Let me just say, but it hurts in different ways. You don't, you don't injure yourself. It's like when you slap the mat and you if you're going down hard, the harder you slap the mat, your arm, your whole arm is going to sting and it's going to hurt and it's going to, oh, you're going to feel like crap and maybe the wind's going to be knocked out. But 
you know, you didn't injure yourself as opposed to putting your elbow out or not putting anything and then boom, just hitting your head. Well, that's serious. That's a more serious type of injury as opposed to just your arm, you know, ow, you know, it hurts. <laughs> Suck it up, buttercup. Wait, I shouldn't say that, right? Ah, oh, yeah, I can. Yes, I can. So look, it's a lot. Let's see. Let's see. It's a lot of strategic falling that is patterned after the things that happened to quarterbacks during the season. So we're kind of recreating those things because the master of jujitsu had to study the game tape to understand how he was falling. This is so interesting and where the impact points were and how we can help to correct it. So that is cool. So so for the listeners that don't know what jujitsu is, and this is a jujitsu and veteran centric uh, and well-being and health and well-being and mental health and all that stuff centric um, uh, podcast. Uh, jiu-jitsu is a self-defense, self-defense sport in the world of martial arts. So the practice is based on ground fighting with an emphasis on using grappling and wrestling to control the opponent. Part of the drilling is rolling. The major part of the sport is being able to roll swiftly either from an escape to a potential escape, a potential submission, uh, or to gain an advantageous position over the opponent in jiu-jitsu. Uh, jiu-jitsu rolling allows people to quickly get into positions on their feet, which means when someone is on the ground, they are using their shoulders and back rather than rolling right over on their head. So this is this technique is especially uh, useful uh, for quarterbacks, right, who are put in these situations where they may be hit and unable to protect themselves as they're hitting the ground. So I'm noticing some of the uh, some of the tackles, uh, some of the the sacks. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it, they're looking a little a little better. He's not waiting until it's too late and his head is getting whipped. And oh my God, that last one, it was ugly. Like his fingers even like twitched up. And, and yeah, this is a big deal to me because um, my kid, he's a quarterback. He plays um, in high school and I've seen some of those sacks and I'm like, Oh my God! But he uh, he also did um, uh, do train a lot of jujitsu since he was like four years old. So he kind of has the fundamentals, but then he kind of quit for a bit, or not quit. He put it on pause because he's doing all kinds of other things. So, anyways, I found that interesting. So, football players, if you have any kids, his message goes out to all the parents. If they have any kids uh, doing football. Um, doing any sort of sport, it would be advantageous to uh, to look at a jiu-jitsu academy uh, and get some training and be very specific with the, uh, the professor. Say, hey, look, um, my son plays this sport and is this something that you can help? You know, I'm looking for more of that, uh, more of that how learn how to fall kind of kind of uh, technique. So I thought that was cool comment below and let me know what you think. God, I wish more people would comment. Seriously, just comment. Well, if it's on Spotify, you can't really comment, right? Well, yeah, now I'm rambling. I hate when I do that, but that happens to me. Like my mind is always rambling. I don't know about you guys, but it's always like, oh, look, Ooh, squirrel. Oh, look at that butterfly. Oh my God, look at that little birdie. Oh, oh, what if I shoot it? No, I'm kidding. I would never, never, never. I wouldn't even kill a spider. What's wrong with me, right? Like I pulled a spider out, put it in a little cup, and then let it back out. I'm getting soft. Speaking of soft, let's talk about someone else raising your children. Some oh no, what a general what did the Commandant of the Marine Corps say? Someone else will raise your children. So let's move on to the next headline, okay? Because uh, this one is very interesting and very uh, veteran-centric, of course. Uh, so just, I think it was yesterday, either yesterday or today. Um, but um, he was, uh, uh, the Commandant of the Marine Corps gave a very, very aggressive warning here. Let me pull it up right here. Let me pull it up. Um, it is coming up, coming up. Look, I'm trying to find that quote. It's here, here we go. Uh, the conflict, uh, let's see. 
a Navy recently. The Pentagon. Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Uh, hmm, I don't know. Anyways, the point is that... Um, Oh, it's right here. It's right here. Look. So the 24th uh, Marine Amphibious Unit and the uh, 26th Marine uh, Marine Corps Expeditionary Unit is out and it's in the vicinity of the Mediterranean. And what this is, like the the the, the Mew is is actually three amphibious ships with uh, their attack ships. I mean, there's uh, over 2000 Marines. These are all highly trained Marines specifically for these beach landing type of uh operations and attacks and uh they got their own flight i mean they got their own aircraft they got everything they're ready to go and they're america's 911 force uh congress doesn't have to approve uh any of this uh, attack the uh, congress does not have to declare war to have the marines uh go out and uh and you know um show some force or 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 aid in whatever the mission is they're America's 911 force. That's uh, that's the nickname. Anyways, so uh, Commandant of the Marine Corps said uh, right here. Let me see. U.S. officials. God, I just had it. Oh, right here, right here. Look, it says right here. I'll tell you this. The 24th uh, Marine Amphibious Unit uh, is in the area. And then referencing uh, the 26th Marine Expeditionary uh, Unit, which he said was in the vicinity of the Mediterranean and Red Sea. They also come in peace, okay, um, but they bring weapons of war if needed. And then for those, this is the part that oh, really got my attention. For those that are in the area, if the Mew has to go in, if you target them, someone else will raise your children which I find that a super, super aggressive stance on it. I mean, it typically it typically hasn't escalated uh, like this, especially with our current uh, um, president and the current administration. It's been a very, oh, uh, oh, I think the last one we got was don't, 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 don't. don't. Okay, I'll stop. I was kind of channeling that family guy. <laughs> like, <sighs> anyways, um, yeah, this was a very different take on um, on the U.S.'s uh, position in what is happening out there. I really pray that nothing happens and everything gets de-escalated, but I will say the Marine Corps has always been prepared to uh, answer that call. And, uh, and I'm here, I'm here in Texas and um, what was it? Fort, uh, Fort Hood, not Fort Hood, down south. I forgot the, actually over by El Paso, I forgot the name of that, um, that base. It's an army base, but that got completely mobilized us as I've been reading. So there's something going on. I hope it's just a show, a force show of uh, power and uh, nothing comes of it because uh, we don't want that. We never want that. Um, hurts a lot of people. Um, even if we win, it hurts us because look, look what's happened with Afghanistan and, and, uh, and uh, Iraq. Um, a lot of veterans are in need of help and sometimes as veterans we don't reach out and ask for that help so quick psa on that heroes night out it's a nonprofit organization here in uh, cedar park leander area that are there to help you uh, with that through uh, programs and resources and all of the above and uh, i'm a huge fan of that organization so you can always reach out to us directly here and uh, the contact our contact information is is in the description um, or reach out to Heroes Night Out. They're amazing. All right. So I want to talk about I, I um, let me see two, three days ago. No, Monday, I posted a video or last week. I don't know. Every single day, like seems like one huge month or I don't know how to say it, but I just feel like this whole month. Heck, this whole year has been one long ass day. Like there's no start and ending to each day. So point I was trying to make is <laughs> I um, posted a video on my morning ritual. It was just a little tiny bit, like 30 second clip. And 
I got a lot of questions like DMs about that, like, hey, so what do you do? So what kind of uh, sauna or how long in the sauna, how long this, how long that? And I want to share with you what my morning ritual looks like. And everybody should have a morning. You know, everybody does have a morning ritual. It's just not one that's conducive to a, to a great start of your day. <laughs> Um, usually it's, uh, you, you crawl out of bed, you go grab your phone and then you're having coffee with some, uh, pan dulce. So you got that sugar spike and then you're still groggy and then you're grumpy going to work and then you might have traffic. And by the time you get to work, you're all tensed up. And what do you do as comfort food? You have a donut or some coffee with extra sugar in it. And, and then you're like, damn it, life sucks. You know, I got to work. I feel weak. I feel so that's not a very healthy and productive um, morning ritual. And we all have it. So you got to change it and you got to do it slow. So what I'm about to share right now is what I do, but it's taken it's taken years to get here. So it's like one little bit at a time, because if you try to do it all at once, you yeah, you're not going to stick with it. So you got to you got to embrace the whole tiny habits. And there's actually a book uh, called Tiny Habits that, you know, kind of guide you. It's a short book, too. It's such an easy read, but it kind of uh, helps you and guides you on how to change your habits tiny, a, t a little tiny bit at a time. So anyways, morning ritual. So here it is. 6 a.m. I wake up sometimes. Um, Sometimes I end up waking up a little bit earlier before my alarm, because but I have a 6 a.m. alarm and uh, 5:50, 5:45, 5:55, boom, I'm up and um, I go do my regular things. Uh, I brush my teeth and you know get dressed, throw some shorts on, a t-shirt, and then I get coffee because coffee is important. I'm sorry, I can't kick that habit. Like, is it bad? No, uh, I do. Um, black coffee. I don't put sugar in it and that's it. So, well, first I have a huge glass of water, um, warm, uh, room temperature. And then I start downing, uh, uh, I start drinking some coffee and it tastes so good in the morning. I, uh, stumble out to my gym here in, uh, at my house in the garage and I set up, uh, my workout regimen. Um, or, so Lately, I've been doing a lot of globo gym type of stuff, you know, bench, <laughs> bench and buys, tries and back and tries. And then Wednesday is uh, leg day kind of thing. I know you all remember that back in the day. Um, I'm not doing a lot of CrossFit stuff right now or hit training or, or what do they call it? Functional fitness. Nah, I just want to relax. I, uh, you know, I work out pretty hard in between sets. I'm, I'm um, either... Uh, listening to a book, reading a book. Um, so I make it productive as well. That's where I get my reading in. So that usually takes about 40 minutes, 45 minutes tops. And I'm done regardless. Like if I have to cut my workout, I cut it. So I, I move on. And um, from that, I go directly into um, into the sauna. So I work out a little bench press, you know, buys, bicep curls and, and, um, and whatever is on the agenda for the day. And then I'll end it with a quick little 10 minute row or, or a salt bike, which ugh, sucks, but it's all good. Kind of gets things kind of loosened up because I tighten up a lot from the shoulders. So right after that, I walk into the sauna and it's already blasting. It's already at about 155 degrees. I sit there for 20 minutes. Now here, it's another habit that maybe is not the best, but if I have any training material for work or something I need to do without having to move and I need to watch something, boom, I take my iPad um, in there and I, I do the training there. So it's, I'm not wasting time in between, like I'm packing everything in, I'm compacting everything in and that's important. Um, so a lot of you are driving and maybe you're, you're driving right now while you're watch while you're listening, not watching, <laughs> don't be watching this if you're driving. Um, but, um, but you, um, yeah, you're probably listening to it and you're, you know, making the best of that, 
that windshield time, right? You're, you're just, I mean, what are you going to do? Just kind of stare at the road, blast some music. Well, music is good, but it's waste of time. Uh, you're not becoming educated. So take that time. If you're commuting, educate yourself. Uh, listen to a good podcast uh, like El Pinchy Podcast, episode 31. <laughs> Uh, or or something. Uh, Ed Milet is amazing. If you guys don't know Ed Milet, go look him up. He is he is a great inspiration, and uh, and I follow him um, almost religiously. I say almost religiously because um, it's not like my religion. <laughs> All right, enough. Um, so. Uh, sauna. So I'm there. Um, once I'm ready to go, I uh, once I'm done with that, I'm ready to go to the next step, which is the ice bath. OK, so I got my thing set up. It's only set up at 40. Uh, I think it's 44 fluctuates between 44 to 47. And, you know, a lot of people oh, will turn it down to 32 or 35 or 37. Well, it can go. I think the lowest it can go is 36. And I've tried it and it hurts a little bit more, but then I read the articles and I read the research on it. It doesn't matter. I think 45, anything below 45 that, yeah, you're, you're just, it's just for other reasons, for other painful reasons. But I sit there for about five minutes straight, um, practice a lot of breathing. There's no, I put some meditative music on, um, because there's no, you can't have music. You cannot learn anything during that time. You just have to focus on your breathing. And that kind of helps you, um, helps you with that. You can do it. If you don't have an ice bath, you can do it um, in the shower. Just <laughs> turn it on cold and breathe. You got to really breathe. And you don't have to go cold turkey like all at once. You can, um, you can, you um, you know, just don't go really hot. Just go lukewarm. And then the next day, a little bit more next day or for a week, you know, if it's painful, but you can still like you can still um, manage it. Just be cool. Um, just stay there for a bit and then boom, turn it down a little bit more until you're taking a shower with cold water. And it's amazing. But you do have to breathe through it. And uh, and then uh, once you do that, then, yeah, then you're going to have to get an ice bath or something. And, uh, they're relatively inexpensive now. Um, and then there's a lot of, um, uh, YouTube university hacks that you can, um, you can, um, you can build one for almost nothing. Um, so yeah, ice bath. So then I'm there for 10 minutes. Then I get out and I go straight. I dry off a little bit. Um, uh, and then I go and pull out my my planner. I look at my calendar and I start visualizing everything that I have on my agenda and I organize, reorganize stuff that I didn't get done yesterday. I move it in a, in a place where I can get to it now. And that's it. Then I go, usually during this time, I'm still shivering because I just got out of the uh, ice baths, but I'm alert. My eyes are like wide open. And uh, I... I get through it, and then uh, once my body temperature starts to settle down, which is about 10 minutes, then I go take a shower um, and, yeah, shave my beautiful bald head. And um, and once I'm done with that, I walk out, get a refill of coffee. Now I'm on my third cup. I got a problem with that. I drink way too much coffee. But I drink a lot of water to go with it as well. Speaking of, where's my... Yeah. I don't know where my water went, but it's all good. I'm still okay. So, so then, yeah, I hit, yeah, I hit the day and, and, and attack my day and everything's on my calendar already. And, and I just go until, you know, what, 12, 12 o'clock by then, uh, by the time I'm done with the shower, the, you know, planning of my day, it's, it's about eight, uh, what is it? Eight. No, it's it. Eight. Sometimes I go a little over. So by eight thirty, I have to be done with everything, and that's when I start officially start my work day uh, at eight thirty. So it's two and a half hours of me time every day. And let me tell you, that's important, especially if you have kids and you have a family and and uh, husband or wife. You just you just gotta take that time for yourself. And and there's. 
it's so tough to get during the day unless you do jujitsu Mondays and Wednesdays. I try to get in um, in more days of jujitsu, but it's tough with the kids and everything. You got to go. You know, you're, you're an unpaid Uber driver, right, as a parent. And I always tell everybody that kids are so overrated. I don't know. Um, that's just my perspective on it. But um, I'm kidding as well in case my kid is listening or my kids are listening. So that is, uh, that is my uh, morning ritual. Um, there's some intermittent fasting in there, but I'm not going to get into the details. Um, maybe next episode, next week, I'll get into it. Um, we'll talk about the intermittent fasting routine that I have and how I combine it with my morning ritual. And I think that's, that's pretty much it. So practice a lot of mindfulness as well. Like, you know, be present and all that stuff. There's, um, there's a really nice book called the, uh, the four, uh, God, the four agreements, four agreements. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah. The four agreements. What am I? Oh, because there's a fifth agreement. Uh, there's another book. Um, I forgot the name of the author, but you know, the four agreements are the be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personal. Don't make assumptions and always do your best. But um, again, that's another that's another episode. And I think I think that's going to be a nice topic for for next week just to follow up with this. So that is all I have now. Let's uh, let's move on with the classic. This time I'm going to read it. It's all me. I feel like I've been talking forever. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Let me read this. It's affirmator. Affirmators. Affirmators. Yeah, I swear. I always think that it's said incorrect, that I'm saying it incorrectly. Affirmations, but they call them affirmators. All right. So what do I have here? I have, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with the camera. Uh, it's not going to focus. Well, there it is. Well, it's, it's this, uh, this lady and a little rabbit with bagpipes. But let's see. I st honesty is the name of the uh, uh, affirmator. So honesty. I stand tall and ground myself in complete and total honesty. It might seem scary to tell the truth all the time with everyone about everything. But when I practice radical honesty, I can stop hiding and start relaxing. And the best part is honesty from me inspires honesty from others. So what results in this results in a rootin' tootin' trust parade and everyone's invited except the bagpipe players, but they'll probably show up anyways. So practice radical honesty. I love this part. So that's what I'm taking away from it. So practice radical honesty. So it, God, this is, I wish the guys were here. My co-hosts, you guys would love this. You guys would be all over it. Um, sometimes, and when I say sometimes, it's me. <laughs> we tend to pretend that we're doing amazing and everything's great. Well, let me tell you, uh, a lot of the times it's not. It, You know, life is hard, but you got to keep moving forward and, uh, and you know, I never was comfortable showing any type of vulnerability and you can blame that on my Mexican culture where um, they tell me to, ah, no llores, don't cry, don't <laughs> uh, suck it up, right? And then I joined the Marine Corps and then I was like, suck it up. And the enemy doesn't give a shit. You got to take some Motrin, drink water. Well, yeah, all that, all those feelings get buried in and when they come out, it's, oh my God, it's a racket. But, um, anyways, I've been uh, working through that, and now I can honestly say, <laughs> radically honestly say that, yeah, times are tough, um, but you got to keep moving forward. That's why you have to have that whole discipline thing. You got to keep pushing, and um, and 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 push forward. Like there's no stopping. What, what, you know, what's the alternative? Think always. Think what's the alternative? Like if you stop, you know, if you if you give up on something, um, what's going to be the result? So that's what keeps me disciplined and sort of motivated because motivated, I mean, motivated is temporary, as we all know, and there's all kinds of buzzwords out there about it. 
but um, motivate it, motive that kind of when I when I th- start thinking that way, like, hey, what's the alternative that motivates me to just push forward? Like, I'm not going to stop um, because I don't quit and that's it. And then that goes into resiliency and that goes into grit and that goes into other other things. But you know what? We control our mind. We control what they're feeling, what the feelings are, you know, um, what we feel in our body. A lot of the times it's um, it's provoked by your uh, by your mind. And you got to I, I always like to I know uh, Joe Jitsu here. He says it's. Uh, it's the two wolves, right? The story of the two wolves. I call it the drunken monkey that sits right here on my shoulder and is like, no, you can't do that. Oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, did you see the way he looked at you or she looked at you or, oh, my God, blah, 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 blah. No, I flick it. I say, no, shut up. Uh, you're wrong. And uh, and you move forward and do the right thing and you keep, keep pushing forward. Kind of like this uh, episode, right? Because I'm like, dang, man. I messed up. Let me just go ahead and um, and you know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to post anything this week, but no, we uh, push forward and uh, we move move on. OK, so on that note, I think let me see if I have anything else. You guys uh, comment and uh, and if you are watching this on Spotify, go to YouTube and subscribe as well to help grow and what do, what do uh, podcasters say? Help us grow the, the something about the algorithm. Uh, the algorithm likes it. So punch that, punch that like button or subscribe button. I don't even know. But <laughs> anyways, point is go to the YouTube channel and um, LPG podcast and uh, subscribe. And also on Spotify, if you're watching this on Spotify, thank you. Not much to do there. I know it doesn't have... Um, a comment section. So all good share with friends, family, uh, or anybody else that uh, may be interested in this jujitsu veteran centric, um, uh, um, veteran centric. What was that other one? Oh, health, well-being, mental, mental health, well-being podcast. All right. And on that note, uh, I don't get to do this with anybody, right? So I, I could just say one, two, three, El Pinchi Podcast. <laughs>